Hello everyone, welcome to this webinar series. Silicon Carbide provides many advantages over silicon and industry adoption is growing fast. One common challenge to upgrade from silicon to silicon carbide is the noise and EMI induced by faster switching speed, which in the meantime enables high efficiency and high switching frequency. In this video series, we're going to show you where our technology stands in the silicon carbide industry and share our recommendation to overcome the challenge of fast speed. The last two episodes, we introduced the excellent figure of merits of Gen4 silicon carbide fats to offer low conduction loss, low switching loss, flexible gate drive, and best short circuit withstand time in the market. The low specific on resistance of our technology is the key to achieve these advantages. In this video, we will share how to use silicon carbide FES to approach its full potential with EMI in mind. The FED user guide can be found right on our homepage or under design resources. A link is provided here as well. In the user guide, you will find a comprehensive table. Here I will briefly explain how this table is laid out. The first column gives device part number. This group of columns gives device parameters. The gate drive voltage group gives gate resistor recommendations for different gate drive voltage levels. This group of columns gives snubber recommendation for starting point. And right next to it is the snubber resistor loss at different current levels. The application types will have an impact on our snubber recommendations as required, recommended, optional, or no need. For example, for the 6 milliohm 750 volt Gen4 device, which is the first row, we require snubber for hard switching and a starting RC value is provided here. But for the same device in soft switching, we only recommend the snubber capacitance, so there is no snubber resistor in series. And this device is good for all hard and soft switching applications listed here. We have two recommended configurations for RC snubber, one for hard switching and one for ZBS soft switching. The circuit diagram shows a simple half bridge. DC link capacitor is the bulk capacitor that provides energy to the load. CD is a decoupling capacitor placed very close to the half bridge to reduce power loop size and parasitic inductance. CD provides the charge and discharge energy during switching transients. For hard switching VDS ringing and spike, uh, RC snubber right across the device drain to source is most effective to damp out the ringing. We call it a device snubber. For ZVS soft switching, we recommend a pure snubber capacitance CS across the device drain to source and put the snubber resistor in series with the decoupling cap CD. This way, the snubber resistor RS is not in the ZVS path and the CS energy can be fully recycled. We call this a bus snubber. The snubber resistor RS will dissipate a small amount of energy, but since this energy can only be taken out from PCB traces, it is recommended to have a wide fat PCB copper area connected to the snubber resistor RS terminals. Typically, the DC bus high and low should have large copper area to dissipate the heat. There are many technical documents on how to calculate RC snubber values online. Here I cited TI's seven steps. First is to measure the VDS turn off oscillation frequency, F0. Then we need to add a capacitor C1 to the device under test drain to source and measure the oscillation frequency again, F1. With F0 and F1, we can calculate the power loop parasitic inductance L and the stray capacitance C0 of the device under test. This capacitance C0 includes device output capacitance, stray capacitance from PCB layout, and heat sink isolation. Once we know C0 and L, we can calculate an empirical value of RC snubber and optimize from there. 
In many cases, the C0 is dominated by device COSS, and we can simply start from 2x of the COSS ER. Snubber is a universal solution to all faster switching devices, and let's see the effect from a silicon carbon MOSFET first. A typical turn-off waveform of silicon carbon MOSFET is attached here. Device is a 1200 volt 80 milli ohm device in 2 to 47 volt package. VGS is from 0 to 18 volt. Current is 50 amp. VDS is 800 volt. Due to the faster switching speed of silicon carbon MOSFET, there will be high VDS spike and a long reading duration. The high VDS spike will reduce the device margin to handle voltage stress from conditions like lightning and sudden load changes. The long reading duration will introduce more EMI. This phenomenon is more noticeable at high current levels. The VDS spike and reading comes from the oscillation between the power loop stream inductances and the device output capacitance. The parasitic inductance voltage equation is provided here. For a given design, the first solution will be to reducing the DIDT. It is common to use higher RG to slow down both DIDT and DVDT. However, this will force the trade-off between efficiency and EMI, and we'll find that using high RG dramatically increases the switching loss. Another viable solution is to reduce power loop inductance it requires redesign of PCB layout and use of smaller packages that are less inductive. However, there is a limit to how much we can minimize the power loop area as there are safety regulations that, minimize, that sets the minimum spacing and clearance. Also, by using smaller packages, we sacrifice the thermal performance. We recommend a simple RC snubber to provide the best trade-off between EMI and switching loss. The left waveform is by using snubber and a 0 ohm RG off, and the right hand waveform is by using high RG off and no snubber. Both limits the turn of VDS peak spike. However, the snubber uses 33 nanoseconds to damp the reading, while RG, high RG off still has over 100 nanoseconds reading duration. Also, snubber has less delay time than using high RG off. Therefore, snubber is more effective to control both VDS spike and reading duration at the turnoff. Let's also compare switching losses. The losses shown here are hard switching losses, which means the current measured includes both device current and the snubber current. The left chart shows a green curve that is the test condition using RG of 0 ohm which has the fastest switching speed but excessive reading. It forms the baseline to this benchmark. The blue curve is the test condition using high RG of 5 ohm, which can control the VDS spike but has no effect on the reading duration. The yellow curve is the test condition using snubber and a small RG of 0 ohm. As you can see, the snubber solution is much more efficient than high RG of. At 48 amp, High RG off has more than twice the turn off switching loss than using snubber with a small RG off. The hard switching application device snubber is more efficient in turn off and it also provides better control over VDS spike and ringing. For soft switching applications, the turn off switching loss should also subtract both device COSS energy EOSS and the snubber capacitor energy, ECS, and there is no turn-on loss. So for ZVS applications, we will see even higher efficiency with pure capacitive device snubber. The chart on the right is the turn-on switching loss. Green is without snubber, yellow is with snubber. Both have the same RG on 5 ohm. As we can see, snubber will slightly increase E on by about 70 microjoule in average for hard switching. Therefore, for hard switching applications, we need to add both E on and E off together and compare the E total. The green curve here is the total switching loss where device is switching at full speed but with excessive reading. 
Blue curve is total switching loss with high RGO. Yellow curve is for snubber with zero ohm RGO. It is clear that after 18 amp, snubber is more efficient. For a 40 milliohm device switching at 40 amp and 40 kilohertz, the difference of using high RGO off and snubber in switching loss alone is 11 watt per device. In this episode, we shared how to use user guide to pick a good starting condition. We demonstrated using a small snubber with low gate resistance is more effective and efficient than simply using high gate resistor to control VDS spike and ringing. In the next episode, we will explain why snubber is more efficient and investigate the true snubber resistor loss. Thank you very much for your attention. Please stay tuned for the next video.